It is Friday. Yesterday, uh, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson was confirmed um, to be a justice on the United States Supreme Court. And you know the historic significance of that. Um, it could be seen as a, uh, a necessary step toward bringing some some uh, some real diversity and 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 extreme life experience to this court. Um, as we all know, there was a huge concerted effort by the fascist Christian white people in this country. Not only to deny Judge, soon to be Justice, Jackson, her seat on the Supreme Court, but also to sully her record, uh, to embarrass her, to denigrate her, to belittle her, to slash and burn her, because she was two things that the Christian fascists cannot abide. She was a person of color and she was a woman. Oh, no. Oh, no, can't have that. Anyway, she was confirmed by a 53 to 47 vote when Lisa Murkowski and the sainted um, Susan Collins and the very religious Mitt Romney decided to vote for her confirmation, along with all 50 members of the Democratic caucus, which was kind of a surprise because included in that 50-member caucus of Democrats is Joe Manchin. However, the vote was a rejection of the fascist Christians' attempts to paint her as a liberal extremist who had coddled criminals. How do you coddle a, a, a criminal? What, what, where's that word come from? Seriously. Just occurred to me, is that the same as cuddled? Coddled, cuddled, must be. Uh, I remember first hearing coddling criminals during the Nixon years, right? Remember all that? Anyway, um, the people who believe that Judge Jackson would be an absolute necessary and sterling addition to the Supreme Court, and I put myself among those uh, people, uh, the portrayals of her were dismissed as distorted and offensive and bullshit and what you would expect from fascist Christians. Uh, and a lot of folks saw her confirmation as an uplifting uh, occasion for the Senate. And some people say it, it's a good indication of how far the country has come. Well, in, in terms of squeaking by with racial justice or fairness or an equitable approach to people of color, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll concede that it was a indicator of how far the country has come. But for the most part, because of the kind of opposition leveled against Judge Jackson, I would respectfully, nah, screw that, I would viciously disagree that there is anything that shows how far the country has come. When you have a vote of 53 to 47 for a woman as qualified as Judge Jackson is, how do you, how do you call that a mark of how far the country has come? I can't do it. I'd like to, but I can't. Now, you probably know by now that the parents of Judge Jackson both attended segregated schools, but she um, earned two degrees from Harvard University. She's 51, and now she will replace Justice Stephen Breyer, who is going to retire at the end of the uh, court session this summer, and then she will take her place the first Monday in October, as is tradition. Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, for now, for now, said on the Senate floor in Chuck Schumer style, quote, even in the darkest times, there are bright lights. Today is one of the brightest lights. Let us hope it's a metaphor, an indication of many bright lights to come, end quote. Well, yeah, sure, I can climb on board that train uh, with you, Chuck Schumer, but, um, and I realize that's what you have to say. 
But, and I realize that's what you want to say. It's what I would like to say, too. But an indication of many bright lights to come? Um, I guess all I can do is, without being a real stick in the mud, just say, okay, I'll just reserve judgment, but I don't have a whole lot of faith in the direction this country is heading. Faith that there will be a positive or bright light outcome. Unless the bright light is a nuclear flash or something, right? But Schumer added, and I I, I don't know if this is uh, unnecessary uh, rhetorical overload or what, but he added this, quote, how many millions of kids in generation past could have benefited from such a role model, end quote. I would wonder how many kids ever look at a Supreme Court justice as a role model. In the first place, we don't know anything about them. Generations past. Oh, my God. When I was a kid growing up, uh, growing up, the, the, the main thing I knew about the Supreme Court was seeing signs that said, well, I wasn't a kid growing up. I was I was an adult. Signs that said, impeach Earl Warren. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah. Appointed by Dwight Eisenhower, I think, to the Supreme Court as uh, chief justice. He was a conservative for a while. And then he became, by any measurement, uh, an outstanding liberal. That's why there were signs all over the South. Impeach Earl Warren. I started seeing them when I was about 17, traveling through the South. But most kids, especially today, uh, are going to, I'm sorry, most kids, especially 20, 30, 50, 60 years ago, I would assume that's what Chuck Schumer is talking about, would have benefited, uh, would have even seen a Supreme Court justice as a role model. I'll guarantee you that kids can't tell you the names of more than one or two. Well, they can tell you uh, Katanji, uh, um, uh, Judge Katanji <laughs> Brown Jackson's name. But beyond that, hmm. oh, well, it's just Chuck Schumer. <laughs> Doing his Chuck Schumer thing, I guess. Anyway, the uh, at the Capitol, you remember the Capitol where the vermin attacked the white crazy people with their, um, it, 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 oh, drop it, Mike. <laughs> okay. At the Capitol, the galleries, which were closed for because of the, much of, uh, much of the pandemic. Um, but this time, the galleries there in the in the Capitol were filled with supporters who were there to witness this historic vote. And when it was finally confirmed, when the vote was over, 53-47, the chamber erupted in cheers, and Democratic senators, staff, and visitors jumped to their feet for a lengthy standing ovation. And it was all yay and wonderful. And if you've seen pictures of that, you see the right side of the chamber, that would be the right side from the podium facing the chamber, the right side, standing white people, mostly applauding and clapping and cheering and so on and so forth. Um, and the left side, vacant. Vacant. That's because not everyone shared in the joy. And this is why I don't think Chuck Schumer's, maybe we have lots of days of bright lights in the future as a tenable possibility. But um, as the applause echoed inside the chamber, the, the turtle... Mitch McConnell, Republican of Kentucky, Senate Minority Leader, who is just biding his time until after the elections um, this November so he can be Senate Majority Leader again. But he turned his back on the podium and slowly walked out, as did most of the few remaining fascist Christians who were on the floor, their eyes downcast, their spirits broken, as a dark lady got the requisite number of votes to become a Supreme Court justice. Oh, my God! And the picture of the two sides of the chamber is, if you need one, a stark reminder of where this country is right now.
Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.